Tonight on SCTV News, the nation is still coming to terms with the attack on the Ohio State campus earlier this week. An update on the investigation coming up. And later in world news, Cuba honors the life of longtime president Fidel Castro. He passed away this week at 90 years of age. All that and more right now. Thanks for joining us on SCTV News. I'm Marshall Keeley. And I'm Isabella Marcelino. Police have identified the Ohio State University student who carried out an attack on the school as Abdul Artan. Artan hurt 11 people after ramming a group with his car. He then got out of the car and attacked more bystanders with a knife. Police shot Artan during the attack. Authorities told students to run, hide, fight during the attack. Next week, SUTV will take a closer look at how college students can protect themselves with the Run, Hide, Fight defense strategy. Ships Talented took stage last night to raise money for the hearing impaired. Delta Zeta hosted its first talent show to raise money for the Starkey Hearing Foundation. Which provides hearing aids and other devices for people who are hard of hearing or are deaf. And they also have sisters and other people who are involved in the organization go on mission trips to other countries and give hearing aids to people who need them. With 12 acts, the show was modeled after America's Got Talent with three judges. Students showed their gifts at guitar playing, singing, and even contortionism. Brad Barkdahl took first place, winning over the crowd with his guitar and song. The event raised almost $500. Hunters across the state took to the forest Monday morning to bag a buck. Some think hunting hurts the ecosystem, but hunters can actually help the environment. Zach Salzgiver has more. Many people look at hunting as a blood sport, but it is much more. Hunting is a way of managing wildlife to make sure there is not an overabundance of wildlife throwing off nature's balance. Deer are a critical species to manage. Left unchecked, they can affect other species. Their feeding patterns and their populations can impact other wildlife populations if they're not managed in a proper fashion. Deer, the largest statewide herbivores in PA, can be quite a nuisance and affect smaller animals in the ecosystem by creating browse lines. What a browse line is, is that's basically the height that a deer will reach to try to get a food source, um, which tells us that the food on the ground is not available to them, so they're reaching the most succulent food that they can. The U.S. Forest Service says a sustainable deer population to prevent the starving of the lower populations is 18 to 20 per square mile. But every forest system differs in the amount of animals it can maintain. Every area is different, and it's all about the, the, the stages that that forest composition is currently in. You have your seedling sapling stage, which obviously will hold the maximum amount of deer. And in about the 15-year time span, that becomes a pole size forest. Those seedling saplings can hold up to 40 to 60 deer per square mile. Problems occur when the ecosystem is holding more animals than what it has the resources to support. In Pennsylvania, hunters are used to combat the overpopulation. Hunters are key in managing our deer populations, which is the largest the Commonwealth is. Without hunters to maintain an, uh, an acceptable level of deer to habitat ratio, they can overpopulate extremely quickly. While hunting clearly benefits the ecosystem, trusting the public has drawbacks. The Game Commission relies on education to keep both wildlife and hunters safe. The, the hunter safety program, since it was established, has, has done a tremendous service to young hunters. One, it started to instill ethics in them at a young age. It's brought them aware of the, the dangers that can be associated with hunting. It is it has significantly decreased our, our hunting-related shooting incidents that may occur because Young hunters are brought up and made to be aware of the seriousness of it. PA's annual deer rifle season runs until December 10th. For SUTV News, I'm Zach Salzgiver. For more information on PA deer management programs, visit pgcstate.pa.us. We expect to see tigers, snakes, and bears at the zoo, but seeing them in someone's backyard is a different story. Amanda Trevel has more. Some people compare having dogs to having kids, but owning an exotic animal is a whole nother story. I think unfortunately people are selfish. They see something cute and they want it and they don't do their research and realize how much care that animal is going to need. The East Coast Exotic Animal Rescue located in Fairfield takes care of over 100 animals and 20 different species. It is a lot of hard work, but the lives save make it worth it. We just have these chinchillas that came in. They're not 
considered really domestic, I mean exotic, because you can buy them at pet stores. But the lady who's dying of cancer had nowhere to take them because who, you know, where do you bring a chinchilla that you know they're going to get the kind of care that they need? So even though she was getting ready to pass away, her last wish was to bring them here. So, you know, we'd like to be able to do things like that to help people. Owning, some exotic animals are allowed, like birds, but many problems occur with wildlife animals. A lot of reptiles are not regulated, so people can have all kinds of dangerous, even poisonous snakes without any regulations whatsoever. Um, so that's not good. <laughs> even the shelters sometimes struggle with finding care for these animals. Even just finding a vet, even though we are licensed with two organizations, the USDA and the PA game, for us to find an exotic animal vet is very challenging. Our guy comes from New Jersey, and he is very sought after because very few people know how to work with all these different exotics. So you might get one, but then what happens when it's sick or you can't take care of it anymore. So people just need to really do research before they go out and buy an exotic. Most of these exotic animals come from labs, private homes, or zoo surplus. With so many problems occurring, owning an exotic animal may soon be non-existent. For SUTV News, I'm Amanda Trevel. The survival rate among animals who are trapped, transported, and sold in pet stores is low. Only one out of ten pets survives the trip from jungle to human home. Poetry can be such powerful prose, it can even build a library. At least, that's what tonight's Slam Poetry event aimed to do. People who come out donated a book to stock a library opening next semester. You can take a book and leave a book, or just take a book and then bring it back. It's just so that people that don't have the opportunity to go and get other books can still read. The library plans to open on Baltimore Road next to Giant by this upcoming January. When we come back, tragedy both domestically and abroad in world news. And later, winter is on its way. Get the full forecast after the break. Cuba is mourning the loss of a former president. And a tragic plane crash shook Brazil. Here's the world news. Cuba began an official nine-day mourning Monday after the death of Fidel Castro. Large memorials go through the weekend ahead of Castro's funeral this Sunday. The military is leading a procession with Castro's ashes across the country to honor his power. Fidel's journey will end with a funeral in Santiago de Cuba on Sunday. Leaders from across the globe plan to pay their final respects. 75 people are dead after a charter plane crashed in Colombia. The plane carried the members of the Brazilian Chapican soccer squad. The plane was less than five miles to its destination, Edelin Airport, when it crashed. Six people on board were rescued. Authorities say a crew member and two athletes from the team are among the survivors. Terrifying wildfires fueled by a punishing drought and ferocious winds are plaguing the U.S. southeast. Over the last weeks, dozens of fires in six states have destroyed property and run tens of thousands of people from their homes. Firefighters from across the country are working to contain the remaining fires. Back to you guys at the desk. Well, there's campus construction, condom bingo, Christmas movies, and other craziness happening on campus this week. But no matter what happens, the slate has you covered. Here's the final slate preview of the semester. News reports on upcoming on-campus electrical construction. Ship Life covers condom bingo. Sports highlights basketball. Opinion weighs in on the best TV stations for Christmas movies, and entertainment showcases the Act 5 production, Check Please. This is the last print edition for the semester, but you can keep up all week on the SlateOnline.com. I'm Thomas Whitmer. When we come back, we'll see how an Act 5 production can turn a blind date into a catastrophe. And get into the holiday spirit with the annual SU Little Princess Playhouse. Well, it's December now, and I think it's starting to feel like it. Yeah, it looks, like, it looks like it's time to get those hats and scarves out. Let's send it over to Rebecca with the weather. It's looking a bit dreary this weekend. Tonight, partly cloudy skies with a low of 35. Tomorrow, partly cloudy skies with a high of 46 and a low of 35. In the five day, Saturday, partly cloudy skies with a high of 45 and a low of 34. Sunday, partly cloudy skies during the day with a high of 45, but showers are likely in the evening with a low of 35. The start of our week brings partly cloudy skies on Monday with a high of 47 and some showers on Tuesday with a high of 41. Have a great weekend and stay dry, ship. The only thing more exciting than preparing for the holidays is entertainment news. Let's get to it. Winter break is only two weeks away, so it's time to prepare the binge-watching list. 
Marina Barnett has a recap on what's new this month. Brandon, I'm out. A little to the right, do we please? Yes, my lady. Gilmore Girls fans got an early Christmas present last week when Gilmore Girls A Year in the Life premiered on Netflix. The series has four 90-minute episodes and takes viewers back to Stars Hollow with Lorelai and Rory Gilmore. No credit. I have no underwear. What? Could have been a contender. You're still a contender. The year follows the death of Gilmore patriarch Richard Gilmore and how his death affects the rest of the family. We're happy. Luke and I are happy. And if the last four words have you wanting more, you're not the only one. Creator and executive producer Amy Sherman Palladino remains mum on whether there will be more episodes, but Netflix has other new releases to keep you entertained until then. Marina Barnett, SUTV Entertainment. Season 2 of Fuller House premieres on December 9th and follows the Tanner family through the holidays. And if you're looking for something more serious, the Netflix original movie, Barry, is coming this month and tells the story of President Barack Obama's college life in New York City. Condom Bingo returns to campus tomorrow night. This, this year, the evening is hosted by sexologist Jill McDevitt. The bingo game giveaways are all 4,000 condoms. Players can get free food and prizes. Bingo starts at 9 p.m. and goes until midnight in the Cub NPR. It's $5 at the door and $3 in advance. The French and Creole Club is hosting a Christmas bazaar to raise money for their annual trip to Haiti. They are selling paintings, bracelets, sculptures, and other crafts created by the people of Gromong. All of the money raised is for supplies to finish building an infirmary. The event is tomorrow from 10 till 2 in the Spiritual Center. Holiday season is upon us, and Shippensburg's Little Princess Playhouse is back with holiday fun for the whole family. The Playhouse performs Christmas at the Castle and Elsa and the Snarls in an intimate setting, giving kids a chance to let their imaginations run wild. Showtimes are at 10 and 11.30 a.m. on December 3rd and the 10th in Stewart Hall. Tickets are just $5 at the door, but be sure to arrive early as seating is limited. Don't miss your chance to see half of a Grammy-winning duo, Simon and Garfunkel, this Saturday at the Lore Center. Even though he's flying solo, Art Garfunkel still showcases hits from over 60 years of performing, not to mention six Grammy Awards, including Record of the Year, Album of the Year, and even Best Children's Album. The show is Saturday night at 8 in the Lore Center. Act 5 is at it again, performing a play check, please. Just a girl and a guy looking for their perfect match, but instead finding the total opposite. These bad blind dates will surely make you laugh. There's some pretty crazy people on these blind dates. There's a guy in a burlap sack. That's it. That's his whole character. And uh, there's a girl who has multiple personalities. There's a girl who's a kleptomaniac. So we've got a whole slew of characters for you guys. You can catch this play on Friday and Saturday at 8 and on Sunday at 2. Present your SUID for free admission. That's all we have for entertainment this week. Have a good weekend. When we come back in sports, women's basketball dominated UDC. And see how Shippensburg ranked in the initial Division II Director's Cup standings. Mara Nolan has been named multiple all-region teams. Nolan was named second team CCA All-Atlantic Region and AVCA All-Region Honorable Mention. Nolan is having a historic senior year, setting the Shipmansburg career assist record and became the fourth SU Volleyball athlete to be named All-PSAC all four times. Volleyball faces rival Edinburgh in the NCAA Atlantic Region playoffs this Friday at 12. Swimmer Stephanie O'Toole broke five individual records at the Patriot Invitational in George Mason University. O'Toole broke five out of eight records, including one of her own, and was also part of a record-breaking relay team. She set the school record in the 100 freestyle, 100 fly, 200 breaststroke, uh, 200 indi individual medley, and 400 medley relay. 
Ship's next meet is tomorrow at 6 at the Bomber Invitational in Ithaca, New York. Shippensburg Raiders currently lead the NCAA Division II Learfield Sports Directors Cup. Points are awarded based on each institution's finish in up to 14 sports, 7 women sports, and 7 male sports. The Raiders have totaled 208 points based off their NCAA Division II championship in field hockey, along with two top 25 finishes in men's cross country and women's cross country. It's a, it's a reflection of where your athletic teams and your program's at. We had a fairly strong fall. You win the national championship, you have the, the national championship, uh, the regional champions in, in cross country, they end up at the national championships as well and perform where they finish in the top 25 each. Volleyball's in the NCAA tournament this weekend. Our other two, three sports were competitive within the, the you know the conference setup, so they wouldn't necessarily get the Directors' Cup points. But uh, what it means is we had a, a very good fall and very happy with with what our teams have been able to accomplish. Shippensburg's best overall finish came in the 2012-2013 year, as the Raiders finished eighth with 585 points. Final results will be calculated after the year is over. The Shippensburg women's basketball team claimed its fifth win of the season. Josh Charles has the highlights. The Shippensburg Raiders hosted the University of District of Columbia last night at Highgus Fieldhouse. The Raiders won 70-33. This is the fewest points allowed by the Raiders in the past 11 seasons. Shippensburg's Colleen Young led the floor with 17 total points, shooting 8 for 11 on the night. Morgan Griffiths recorded a double-double with 12 points and 12 rebounds, while Stephanie Nauer was one point shy of her own double-double, recording 9 points and 12 rebounds. The Shippensburg Raiders look to make a splash in the PSAC East Conference this season and will resume conference play this Saturday against IUP. For SUTV Sports, I'm Josh Charles. The Shippensburg Raiders head to IUP to face the Crimson Hawks at 1 p.m. That's it for sports. Let's head back to the desk. That's it for SUTV News. I'm Marshall Keeley. And I'm Isabella Marcelino. As always, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram at SUTV News. And check out our website, SUTVNews.com. We'll see you next time.